Hey guys, Proper English here, and today we're going to take a look at something I've been working on for the past couple of days. This is called a barrel shifter. And so we're going to talk about what this is, how it works, and why you might use one. But I think the most important thing that we're going to cover today is how I did some of this crazy wiring. I'm going to give you some tips on what you can do to make your wiring super compact. And, and yeah, I think that's going to be super useful because you may or may not use a barrel shifter in your builds but what you will use is wiring, right? So that's something that, you know, it, it's part of redstone. You need to know how to do it. And if you can do it really well, you can make super compact things like this, right? My wiring is something that I'm known for. People make jokes about it, but, uh, but in spite of how messy it can look, how, how crazy it can get, it's effective, right? So we're gonna talk about that today we're also going to be getting into it in my next couple of videos too because you know I've picked up a couple of tricks along the way and uh, I'd like to share them with you guys so let's get started alright so before we get into what a barrel shifter is let's take a look at what shifting is and how it works so what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw a couple of inputs on how about those two and so right now our data comes straight through okay no shifting but if I flip this lever over here, we're shifting it one to the right. And so how does that work? Well, what we've got here is a bunch of multiplexers. Now, I did a tutorial on multiplexers. If you haven't seen it, it's worth checking out because they're super useful. But just in short, what a multiplexer is, is it's a device that takes multiple inputs and selects one of them as the output. All right, and so what I've got here is a bunch of multiplexers set up and the inputs to the multiplexer can come from one of two places. So we'll take a look at this one over here. So this input over here can either go straight through to this multiplexer or it can shift one to the right and go through this multiplexer. And we're selecting whether we want to go here or here. And it's the same situation down here except we're using the other state of the multiplexer. And so when we flip this lever, well now, because we've got this block here, we can get power coming straight through. And because we don't have this block in this one, this repeater can send power right up and out, okay? So now if we flip this over and shift it, well, now we're powering this block, comes right through. And in this case, there's nothing obstructing this wire and we get power coming right through. And it's really that simple. It's just a matter of setting up multiplexes and selecting where you want the data to go. Now, I told you that one of the things that I want to focus on today is the wiring. So we can kind of take a look at some of that over here. We've got this sort of up-down situation, right? So over here, we've got the wire coming across on the top. Then we've got one coming across on the bottom on the top again, on the bottom, and that's a theme that you're gonna see in this barrel shifter over here. So let's take a look at what this thing does. All right, so now that we've talked about shifting, let's talk about what a barrel shifter is. Okay, so in a barrel shifter, we have a data input over here, and we've got a control input over here, and the control input determines how many places we're going to shift the data. Okay, so we send a binary input over here, okay? And that will tell us how far to shift the data. And so let's turn one of these guys on over here. And right now we're saying to shift zero positions. And so it comes right through, no shifting. But if I come over here and let's do six. So zero, one, one, zero. So that's four and two is six. Well now, it's not here anymore, it's one, two, three, four, five, six positions over. And so in this particular barrel shifter, because we have four bits, we can shift up to 15 positions. And so let's try that. We'll turn this guy on, and we'll turn this guy on. That's the biggest shift that we can do. So we've got eight plus four plus two plus one. Well, we're gonna shift that all the way down over here and we've actually got one extra one on this one just because I wanted to keep it square but yeah so this thing is pretty powerful 
And so what's going on in here is exactly what you're seeing over here, except each layer is shifting a different number of bits. So this one over here only shifts it over one. It's the exact same thing you see down here. This one shifts it over two. This one shifts it over four, and this one shifts it over eight. And that is where some of this crazy wiring comes into play. So let's take a look at how this works. All right, so the main trick that I use to keep this thing super compact is an up-down stagger. You can see I've got multiplexers down here, all right, and then I've got more multiplexers up here, and it's every other one. So we've got one down there, then one up here, and then it repeats all the way down across the whole thing. And so the reason I did that is because it allows me to distribute the wiring vertically rather than horizontally, okay? So you can see I've got sort of a wiring weave going on down here, okay? And then I've got another one going on up here. And so if I had all of the multiplexes on the same level, I'd have to expand it out horizontally, but because I staggered them vertically, well, I can do one wiring weave up here and the other one down on the bottom. And it's, it's a great situation. It lets me keep this thing insanely slim. And you can see it gets even crazier out here in this fourth layer, okay? So I've got the same kind of up-down thing going on here. So I've got a multiplexer down here and then one up here and that alternates. But then, I mean, we did have to come out a bit, but because this is going so long, right? This one's shifting over eight positions. Well, what I had to do was do another up-down stagger with the wiring so you can see that some of these guys are going up, all right, and then some of them are going down over here. And so that happens up in this top half, and then it happens again in this bottom half. And this wiring gets really, really tricky. You shouldn't expect to be able to jump right into this, but if you practice with this sort of thing, you will get good at it because you'll start to see different ways to go about wiring things. and figuring out where things can go without interfering with other wires. And you can use things like Glowstone to help you out. So I've got some over here and it, it's allowing me to keep this a bit more compact in a vertical direction, right? I'm also using some Glowstone over in here to avoid interacting with this piston. And then I'm using a half slab over here and that lets me send this wire down and that's a great situation too. So. There are all kinds of little tricks that you can pick up on, and when you add them all together, you get this super compact build. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to present a couple of other creations that I've been working on recently that also are heavily focused on the wiring, and we'll get into some of the tricks that I used in those situations because you do different things when you've got different problems, right? And so I think it's gonna be a, uh, a good little sort of series in the background of these creations. So I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you guys next time.